Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome. Today we will discuss to the power factory K factorial design addition of center points. So, you have seen in last class that we discussed to the power of K factorial design with single replicate. single replicate and we have given an example to the power 4 factorial design with to the power 4 16 runs and in analysis we have seen that with this single replicate you are not able to estimate the error part error particularly we are talking about MAC or SAC not able to estimate this one because of no degrees of freedom available for SAC and uh, that means there are no independent observations available that will help us to compute the error terms. So, we have adopted a policy there we say that estimate all the effects and their contribution and find out the percentage contributions and then see which which are the effects having low percentage contribution and discard them primarily following the policy of sparsity of effect principles means the higher order interactions will have negligible effect. So, <coughs> the same problem this problem the error calculation can problem can be sorted out with single replicate plus having another experimental setting which is known as central point. For example, if we discuss with reference to 2 to the power 2 factorial design then this is the diagram these are the factorial points these four corners are factorial points where we usually conduct experiments and at every factorial points we conduct more than one experiment to get replications. Here what is happening <coughs> that in the earlier example that we have only single replications and as a result we could not uh, found out the SSE. Now, if we define central point is basically the point where, where your that x 1 equal to x 2 equal to 0. What will be that point? You know the factorial points this one is minus 1, this is plus 1, low and high. Similarly, for second factor this is minus 1, this is plus 1 at low and high. So, x 1 will be 0 at the mid of this point, x 2 will be 0 at the mid of this line means here. So, that means, if you draw intersect the diagonal lines of, of this rectangle, you will be getting the center points. So, this is the geometrically we am saying this is the center point. In reality, what is this? In reality, it is the point, it is the point, it is the, the process at which x 1 and x 2 the coded values are 0. So, that means, this is the point where the effect of x 1 and x 2 in the coded scheme is 0. So, if you conduct several experiment here, what will happen by using those experimental runs those uh, uh, that y values, you can compute the error independently. Okay. 
So, as we have seen earlier that at every point factorial point you conduct experiment to find out the find uh, uh, you conduct more ex number of experiment to find out the error terms error values here. Okay. This is one suppose you go for the three factor case in that case the central point is 1 where x 1 x 2 x 3 equal to 0 and the eight corner points are the factorial points. So, cent center point is 1 where the effect of the um, factors is 0. In the way we have defined the scheme. Another important thing is that this is the point where mostly the op process is run and this is the point which is more familiar to the production system means actual operations. The reason is you uh, usually we define the high low like minimum is low and maximum is high and most of the time you will be seeing that in between the two the middle point the operator will try to fix the process or set the process at this point which is that is why mo which is the most familiar condition in the production uh, actual in during actual production. So, this is one advantage of having center point. Second, second one is that when we do to the power k factorial design, we assume that the response surface is linear. So, although higher order effects are higher order interaction effects are negligible plus the effects are linear that is that is the best possible uh, situation when you go for 2 to the power k factorial design. it is basically used for screening purposes. So, if the if the the, the process that the, there is a linear relationship then what will happen you have to test it beforehand otherwise the linear model with uh, interaction if you fit it may not be the correct one. Now, the concept here is if the suppose if you if you develop the response surface if you develop the response surface suppose this is a uh, x 1 and this is x 2 and suppose y is in this side. So, this is y response this is x 1 and this is x 2. So, what you assume that for any particular value whether it is a factorial points suppose if I do like this whether it is factorial points or center points if the surface is linear. So, what will happen? the average value at this points and average value at the center point that should be almost equal. Okay. So, that means, if there is nonlinearity then the y will not be equal at, at all the factorial points as well as the center point. Now, there will be difference in the average value of response taking observations of the factorial point and observation at the center point. So, the, the difference if significant then there is quadratic effect second order and that higher order effect not linear that first order with the interaction it will be second order may be and with interaction effects also. So, we will be in a position to if we use center points we will be in a position to find out whether there is quadratic or quadratic error is there or not quadratic error or pure curvature curvature is there or not. Hmm. So, <coughs> this is another one one hand that at the factorial points if you have single replica uh, observations with center point the estimation of error that is possible. Another one is if there is any quadratic error that can be tested with using uh, the center points. Center point give you more data. So, as a result what happened we have more information and 
we can do more kind of analysis. Okay. So, with this uh, background I let me tell you that this met, uh, preparation we have made using the Montgomery book. Now, we will show you the regression surface, regression surface which is which is also known as response surface. surface. So, let us see the slides. If I use first order with interaction, this is our regression equation. Now, if there is curvature, what is known as we are talking about the quadratic effect is there or pure curvature second order, then your model will include the second order interaction the quadratic term. So, suppose you have when you do your factorial experiment, there you will find out that you will not be able to uh, estimate uh, this other parameters the quadratic part also. So, here what we are that is why we are assuming that. So, as I have already discussed, so if there you have to test whether there is curvature in that sense the quadratic effect is there or not you required to have a test. So, with reference to this example, with reference to this example, what you are doing when you conduct the experiment or this example or higher order example. Suppose, you have n f n f number of n f is the number of factorial experiments, factorial experiments and let n c is the number of center, center point experiment. Okay. So, as I told that then if you compute here the average of responses is y f bar and here average of response is y c bar. So, if there is no quadrate the curvature effect what will happen ultimately? you will that it is expected that y f bar minus y c bar theoretically it should be 0, but it, it will be there will be some value you will not get exact value because of that randomness uh, nuisance factors and all those things are there, but if the quadratic effect is there then let us square it and you have how many data points n f and n c. So, you multiplied these two and divided by n f plus n c. This is a measure of S S pure quadratic. Okay. So, what I mean to say with reference to a 2 to the power k factorial experiment with center point, I am saying that you conduct experiment all those points, take their average, conduct experiment at the center point, take the average and the difference in average can be used to compute the S S pure quadratic and which is this formula. Now, what you require to do? You require to test whether this one is significant or not. If this is a significant with reference to a threshold value, then quad pure quadratic effect is there otherwise it is not there. So, in other words, in other words this can be represented like this. So, my response surface is y equal to beta 0 plus some total of j equal to 1 to k beta j x j that is your main effects, then you write down i less than j beta i j x j x i and x j that is the interaction term plus epsilon. This is my first order model. Now, if there is the quadratic effect is present, 
then your model will be this beta j x j plus i less than j beta i j x i x j plus there will be another term j equal to 1 to k beta j j x j square plus epsilon. So, we want to see that this part is negligible. This will be negligible when beta j j j equal to 1 to k beta j j this will become 0, because x j square will be always 1 if we go for coded variable. Okay. So, when I say that S is pure quadratic, we say this equal to n f n c y f bar minus y c bar square by n f plus n c. This one will follow certain distribution and then with using this, we will basically test that the two hypothesis is h 0 is sum total of j equal to 1 to k beta j j equal to 0. Alternate hypothesis is sum total of j equal to 1 to k beta j j not equal to 0. So, this is the test, this is what is the statistics, this is the hypothesis using these statistics you will test this hypothesis. So, if this this statistic hypothesis is null hypothesis is satisfied this becomes 0. So, this is a first order model with interaction. Okay. How do you basically arrived at uh, that uh, relation between this S s pure quadratic vis a vis this j equal to 1 to k beta j j equal to 0 that uh, some uh, explanation is like this. Okay. So, expected value of y bar at factorial points this will be your 1 by n f into n f beta 0 n f beta 1 like this you go up to n f beta k k. Hmm. So, n f beta 0, n f bit 1 1 something like this, 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 n f 1 1 and if you if you follow this, so ultimately your result will be this will be beta 0, beta sorry, beta 0, beta 1 1, beta 2 2. So, like this beta k k and expected value of y bar c this will be using the same way that 1 by n c, n c beta 0 and this will give you beta 0 and and ultimately that expected value of y bar f minus y bar c this will be the difference between that mean expected value of y bar f minus expected value of y bar c. So, this will be beta 0 plus beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2. So, like this this beta k k minus beta 0. So, this is basically beta 0 sorry beta 1 1 beta 2 2. So, like this plus beta k k. So, this is nothing but j equal to 1 to k beta j j. We can say that y bar minus y c unbiased estimator unbiased estimator of the sum of the pure quadratic model parameters of the sum of the pure quadratic model parameters that is 
some of pure quadratic model parameters. What is y a bar? That is average of responses of all the experimental runs conducted on factorial points. Y, y bar c is the average of responses of all the experimental runs conducted on the center point. Okay. So, obviously, the y bar cap y bar f or y f bar minus y c bar this is a random variable. So, having mean is already we have seen that mean value expected bar that minus this this will be this and what will be the variance of this y bar minus y c bar this variance will be we will be sigma square 1 by n f plus 1 by n c. So, you all know that if y is suppose a distributed normally let it be y is distributed with mean mu and variance sigma square when you collect a sample y bar will be distributed with mean mu and variance sigma square by n that is what is happening sigma square by this because of the constant error variance across all level of x for y. So, sigma square is the is the y variability whether it is conducted in factorial point or central point irrespective of this this will be error variability. So, this one we will sigma square we will get and we will basically use sigma square cap fine. We, we all know a statistics called C0 which is y f bar minus y c bar by achha, this minus expected value of y f bar minus y c bar divided by variance square root of variance of y f bar minus y c bar this is what t statistics or this is a uh, what I can say this is a uh, quantity which is t distributed and it will be having n c minus 1 degrees of freedom with follow t distribution with n c minus 1 d o f when under h 0 is true. So, this quantity is y f bar minus y c bar minus expected value is sum total j equal to 1 to k beta j j divided by variance is sigma square root of 1 by n f plus 1 by n c. Now, when h 0 is true, h 0 is sum of beta j j equal to 0. So, this quantity becomes 0. So, this will become y f cap minus y c bar cap by sigma square root of 1 by n f plus 1 by s. Now, what will happen if you square it? Suppose, I make t 0 square. So, this will be y f minus y c bar this square divided by sigma square into 1 by n f plus 1 by n c. So, this is nothing but n f n c y f bar minus y c bar square divided by n f plus n c into sigma cap square. So, here what will happen this t square from theory we know t square equal to f. So, this quantity follows f distribution. Okay. So, that means either you do you do one thing that absolute value of t 0 greater than t alpha by 2 n c minus 1 and then 
we say that quantity effect is the actually if, the if this is the case. So, uh, H 0 is quantity effect is not there, H 0 is quantity effect not there. If, if this quantity is less the greater than this, then H 0 will be rejected, uh, other way it will be accepted. So, I will give you the example here that what we have discussed in last class that filtration rate. So, with single replicates, so there are four factorial points and these are the run levels and these are the these are the response values and this is what is our con contrast constants for uh, all those effect parameters and these things are known to you. And now, suppose in addition to this that four uh, experiments were conducted at the central point and the uh, y value filtration rates are 73, 75, 66 and 69. So, in that case what is the average at the central point? Average at the central point means the average of sum of all those filtration rate values divided by 16 and this will become 70, uh, 70.06 and average of these 73, 75, 66 and 69, this is 70.75. So, <coughs> so, in that example that y bar f that is the factorial point part, it is 70.06 and y bar c central point part is 70.75 and visually also it is the difference is negligible. difference is negligible. So, now what happened you we will use the um, the test what we will calculate we will calculate S S pure quadratic. So, you know this is n f n c y bar f minus y c bar the square divided by n f plus n c. So, n f is 16, n c 4 and y f bar is 70.06 minus y c bar is 17.75 square divided by 16 plus 4 the resultant value will be 1.51. Okay. Now, we want to compute the m a c value. So, the at the center point values can be used to call compute M A C. This is nothing but sum of i equal to 1 to 4, 4 center point values y i minus 70.75 the square divided by 3. So, this will give you when all center point values like 73, 75, 66 and 69 you use in this formulation, then you will get M A C value is 16.25. Okay. You know this <coughs> S S and M A C because we because of having center point you are able to compute this center point experiment and also because of having both factorial and center points experiment you are able to compute the quadratic part also effect S S. So, now let us see that after adding the central points when the final uh, what is the final results. So, you see all the model parameters starting from the main effects to the fourth order interaction effects their sum square the way we have shown you in the last class this is as it is there. So, in addition what happened the Quad that pure error that is the quadratic curvature and quadratic error that all uh, pure error is basically this is the error when y uh, is at the center point y values are obtained at the center point. So, you have seen that the mean M A C value is 16.25. Okay. So, that means 16.25 into 348.75. So, that means y i mm, S S E. S S E at center point is what? S S E center point is sum total of i equal to 1 to 4 y i minus y c bar square. So, this value is 48.75. So, 
So, obviously, it has 3 degrees of freedom. So, we have uh, MAC divided by 3 16.25. So, in addition here is the curvature the quadratic curvature pure quadratic curvature 1.51 that I have shown you earlier in calculation. In calculation we have seen that S S pure quadratic curvature is this. So, you are now having having all information with you. So, we have 16 factorial runs and 4 central point runs in total 20 observations. So, that is why the total is this and it is uh, degree of freedom is 19 and all other cases it is clearly computed and finally, you are in a position to compute the f also and then using f statistics you are able to find out what is the um, what is your Mm, significance level whether how many are significant or not. Now, S S pure quadratic curvature this also with 1 degrees of freedom. Okay. So, that means, when I say that this follows mm, this particular part follows that f distribution then this is f with 1 for the and and an M A C uh, that whatever will be the error that degree that means the 3 n c minus 1. Okay. So, 1 n c minus 1 that degrees of freedom this follows f distribution with this degrees of freedom. Okay. Uh, here uh, now the traditional way you will do you see which are significant which are not significant remove the insignificant part you will be getting uh, this is the final table and over table for reduced model. Here you see that the number indicate that there is no evidence of second order curvature there has been a quadratic effect the significant effect are AC, D, AC and A D almost similar thing we achieved in using the other policy that um, we have discussed in last class, but here it is better it gives you better and another one is that there is a typographical mistake here reject h 0 if this greater than this is correct. So, this shows that quadratic if 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 h 0 h 0 is rejected then there is quadratic curvature it is not no quadratic this is not this is quadratic curvature is there or if this is less than the theoretical there is no quadratic curvature. So, that mistake here is it sh it should be uh, quadratic curvature is there okay, if I follow this. These are these are the some very trivial uh, typographical mistake. You must be able to find out all those things. So another important part here in the central point is that. So when you go for central point experiment ex, uh, experiments, so some of the hints. When a factorial experiment is conducted in an ongoing process, consider using the current operating condition as the center point in the design. This often assume the operating personnel that at least some of the runs of the experiment are going to be performed under familiar condition. So, that is in other way I um, explained in the beginning that the center points will be that familiar condition for the other. actually you choose the central point for the familiar condition where most of the production runs are made. When the center point in a factorial experiment correspond to usual operating recipe, the experimenter can use the observed responses at the center point to provide a rough check whether any unusual thing occurring at the experiment or not. Consider running the replicates at the center point in a non-random order, specifically run one or two center points at or near the beginning of the experiment, near one or two at the middle and one or two at the end by spreading the center points out in time the experimenter has a rough check on stability of the process during experiment. In the same manner sometimes experiment must be conducted in a situation when there is little or no information about process variability. In these cases running 2 to 3 center points at the first few runs in the experiment can be very helpful. These runs can provide preliminary estimate of variability usually center points are employed when all design factors are qual quantitative. 
However, sometimes there will be one or more qualitative or categorical variables and several quantitative ones, central points can still be employed in these cases. So, th with this I show you the reference that we have taken material lecture prepared lecture material by taking information and available resources in that book. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that you understand the use of central points into the power k factorial design and you will be able to solve problems when central point data experimental data along with factorial point experimental data will be given to you.